Inside of the Brandenburg Gurdon prison on the 12th of March 1945, a German general who was very senior in the army was led to a stake inside of a courtyard where he was shot by a firing squad. As Friedrich Fromm was readied by the firing squad, he would have thought how things could have been very different. But all very suddenly the order was given to fire, and Friedrich Fromm, the commander-in-chief of the reserve army, was shot instantly. But his crimes were considered treason against Adolf Hitler in the Nazi state, as he was allegedly involved in the plot, which would have brought down the whole Nazi government and seen it crumble, with a military coup seizing control of the nation that was suffering during World War II. In the aftermath of the July 20th plot, it's believed that Hitler ordered the SS and Heinrich Himmler to execute dozens of his military generals, and around 6,000 people were executed following the failed bomb plot inside Hitler's wolf's lair that wounded the dictator of Nazi Germany. But Friedrich Fromm today is considered by some a heroic figure who gave his life ultimately to try and bring down one of the most evil dictators. But the real story might be a little bit darker than this. Join us today to look at the execution of the German general shot for plotting against Hitler. And as always, to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Friedrich Fromm was born on the 8th of October 1888, and he was born in Charlottenburg, within the capital of Berlin. From a young age it was clear he was destined for a role inside the military, and as the First World War broke out, Fromm then served as a Prussian army officer during the conflict. He reached the rank of lieutenant during World War I, but then after he stayed as part of the army, despite the fact the German armed forces were heavily reduced in their numbers, with only 100,000 soldiers allowed in the new Reichswehr, as outlined by the Treaty of Versailles. At the time the German people were suffering heavily also, but one man who promised to make the country rise like a phoenix out of the ashes of the heavy military defeats was Adolf Hitler. Hitler promised to get Germany back to how it used to be, and he wanted to restore national pride, and because of this the rise of the Nazis and Hitler emerged in a post-war Germany, especially with the issues regarding hyperinflation and political instability plaguing the nation. But Friedrich Fromm, to begin with, was an early supporter of Hitler, and he was a member of the Nazi party, but he remained in the army and worked under General Ludwig Beck, who was at the time the Chief of General Staff. But in 1937, years before the Second World War broke out, with Hitler preparing his nation for a world war, Fromm was promoted and was made the commander of the replacement army. He was also made the chief of the army equipment and armaments, meaning he was someone who was tasked with ensuring logistics on the front line of the conflict was good, and that the German war industry was as profitable, and also that the German war industry was profitable, and was making deadly weapons to be used against their enemies. However, at some point in the conflict, Friedrich Fromm began to become dissenting against Hitler, and also against his management of the German war effort. He saw him as someone who was in the wrong position commanding the war effort, and he saw better military generals being cast aside, whilst Hitler did what he pleased. His dissent came around 1942, and he actually favoured peace with the Soviet Union, believing that Operation Barbarossa was too costly to the German war effort. When Barbarossa stalled outside of Moscow around December 1941, Hitler seized direct command of the army and reorganised the armed forces' command structure. Albert Speer wrote of Fromm's opinions that General Fromm, as chief of the reserve army, deeply concerned about this kind of poor planning. I took him with me to see Hitler several times, so that he could present the arguments of the military. Fromm knew how to state a problem clearly. He had presence and had diplomatic tact. Sitting there, his sword pressed against his knees, hand on the hilt, he looked charged with energy, and to this day I believe that his great abilities might have prevented many a blunder at the Führer's headquarters. After several conferences, in fact, his influence increased, but immediately opposition appeared, both on the part of Keitel, who saw his position threatened, and on the part of Goebbels, who tried to persuade Hitler that Fromm had a dangerous political record. Finally Hitler clashed with Fromm over a question of reserve supplies. Curtly he let me know I was no longer to bring Fromm with me. Directly from Hitler is where Fromm gained his role as a chief of army armaments and of the reserve army. At the time he had a significant amount of power, and it's believed he had enough power to control the German state, as his position in army procurement and production meant he was responsible for supplying all the army forces, but he was in a sense also commanding all army troops inside of Germany. He was answerable to the head of the Ogre commander Das Heers, who was Hitler himself. 
but Fromm recommended a defensive strategy for the entire year of 1942, and he recommended that following the stalling of Barbarossa, that the German army should dig in. This was because at the time the army's supplies were running out, and production quotas for armament were not being hit, with the army's supplies becoming crippled. But as the commander-in-chief of the reserve army, Fromm was in charge of training and recruiting replacement officers and soldiers for the German army, but he became aware that a number of his subordinates and assistants were also becoming dissenting to Hitler, and he learned that many of them were planning an assassination attempt on the Führer. The attempt came in the form of the July 20th plot, in which Hitler's wolf slayer was bombed by Klaus von Staffenberg, but the death of Hitler was only part of the plan, as the plotters would have launched a military coup and also assassinated huge numbers in the Nazi government. Heinrich Himmler, the head of the SS for example, was to be executed by a group of soldiers led by Arthur Neighbour. But news following the bombing came out that Hitler had not been killed, and Fromm then realised that it was Stauffenberg and the other plotters who were behind the attack and explosion, and he then attempted to arrest them. But Fromm to begin with when he tried to do this was quickly overwhelmed by the plotters, who then locked him up inside of a prison cell in the Bendelblock, the headquarters of the replacement army, where the plot and coup were being coordinated from. He was asked to join the plotters but he refused to do this and Fromm's signature had been forged on a number of documents from the start and with this it was believed to anyone else on the outside that he was involved in the plot. After the failing of the coup, Fromm was found by the men of the ersatz here and he was freed but Hitler had ordered that the conspirators should be taken alive. However Fromm had his own plans and he went after the main co-conspirators and he attempted to cover his tracks and look favourable in Hitler's eyes by quickly executing and shooting von Stauffenberg, Friedrich Holbricht and Werner von Haften outside the very place where they orchestrated the coup. But by organising this and executing the others, he attracted suspicion himself, and Joseph Goebbels when he saw the execution said, You've been in a damned hurry to get your witnesses below ground, and with this Fromm was suspected of being a plotter. He expressed his outrage at the plot, but he allowed another conspirator Ludwig Beck to take his own life, but then had him shot and executed after this failed. Following the executions, Goebbels arrived and Fromm tried to claim credit for suppressing the coup, but he was then arrested days later for allegedly being involved. But the court at the time tried to prove a direct link with him and the July 20th plotters, and they could not do this, but Hitler had made his mind up on Friedrich Fromm, and he then charged him and found him guilty of cowardice before the enemy. But as he had executed the conspirators he got his hands on, Fromm was spared the brutal execution that many others got inside of prison cells and execution chambers, as Hitler ordered the conspirators to be hanged using piano wire, and they were tortured heavily. The executions were even filmed so Hitler could watch them. Fromm had been arrested by Heinrich Himmler, and he was then inside of Brandenburg Gordon Prison, awaiting an execution by firing squad. He was brought to the courtyard where he was to be shot, and his last words were, I die because it was ordered, I had always wanted only the best for Germany. Following this the execution squad were readied and they were then ordered to shoot and with this one of the most high ranking members of the German military was executed. Joseph Goebbels wrote of his execution that Colonel General Fromm had been sentenced to death for cowardice in face of the enemy. He thoroughly deserves his sentence. Admittedly it could not be proved that he was actually involved in 20th of July but he did not take the measures which were in his duty to prevent it. Albert Speer also offered to appear in Fromm's defence, however he then wrote, I heard, or rather had it hinted to me, that Hitler ordered the execution of General Fromm. A few weeks before, Minister of Justice, Ferriac, had remarked to me offhandedly and completely unmoved between two courses of a meal. Fromm's going to lose his bonnet soon too. My efforts to speak up for Fromm that evening remained fruitless. Ferriac was not the least impressed, Consequently, a few days later, I sent him a five-page official letter in which I refuted most of the charges against Fromm, insofar as I knew what they were, and offered to appear before the people's court as a witness for their defence. But Friedrich Fromm was a high-ranking member of the military, who was allegedly linked to the plot to assassinate Hitler. But he was shot inside of a prison yard by a group of soldiers who had been ordered by the Nazi hierarchy and Hitler to carry out the brutal will of the dictator. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.